Awo, shalom, salam tonight. Ain't I used to, I mean, this is a little working draft right here. Um, on the Shema, on the Shema. So we have three columns right here. We have this right here is the English. So turn your Bibles to Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse 4. And we're going to touch on, we're going to focus on verses 4 and verses 5 and what's known as the Shema. Some of you might have um, um, gotten a copy of uh, book one of The Good News of Him, which also contains this uh, coronation picture of His Imperial Majesty, the Hashem Kedamawi Haile Selassie. And um, within that particular document, we touch briefly on the Shema, what's known as the Shema, or in the old Hebrew, Shema Yisroel, Yahweh Eloheinu, Yahweh Ahad. In other words, hear, O Israel, the Lord thy God is one. Now, when Jesus Christos, um, our black Lord and Savior, Joshua, Yeshua HaMoshiach, when he was asked, and no doubt you might have come across that portion of the Gospels, and hopefully you have, when he was asked um, concerning the commandment and the and the great commandment. He gave a particular answer, and the particular answer to this uh, great commandment was to hear, O Israel, he mentions the two truths. And no doubt you probably also recall that um, when Jesus Christos was asked about the commandment, and he speaks of the great commandment, and then he says that the second, the second is like unto it. The second is like unto it, namely, you shall love your neighbor, or some might focus more on the the brotherhood aspect. You should love your brother as yourself. You should love your neighbor as yourself. Now, along with that, some would ask, well, who is my brother? Christ answers, who is my brother? And we know that this goes beyond just so-called being black you understand, not to um, fall into the trap of the hate that um, hate produced. In other words, the hate that hate produced. And we'll say just, you know, if you're black, you're my brother. And if you're not, that it's, it's much higher than that. And Christ, Yeshua, the black Moshiach, or the black Messiah, he emphasizes that. But what we want to focus on right here is the Ras Tefari, or the true Rastafari Shema, which we call Bamarinya in the royal language of the King of Kings and his Christ, Jesus Christos, we know this as the Simma, 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 not Zimma, Zimma, even though there's, you know, some <laughs> interesting link with that. Some of you remember the reggae song, Zimma, Zimma, you know, Simma, Simma, but Simma, Simma is an imperative. Simma is a is a command. It's like saying hear, like like listen. It's it's similar to when we say um when we say uh almost like do you feel me? You know that that feel what I'm saying. You feel what I'm saying. It was here, here. So there's a deep there's a deep not just etymological link when we study the word, but see, as we study the word and the etymology of the word, we begin to discover um, the ancient logic. In other words, embedded in these words is, 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 is deeper ideas. And, and so when we're studying the words and we're studying the linguistics of it, it goes beyond just the linguistics. I want to just make that, that point clear to the brothers and to the sisters. But here... Without too much further ado, we're going to go through these three columns focusing on um, what is known as um, the great, the great command. You understand? The great command or the, the, the Shema of the Beta Israel. This is like the word of witness, the word of witness among um among certain of the the Muslims, they have their own um there's no God but God or there's no God but Allah and Muhammad is his prophet right so that's that that's a uh 
a similar word of witness for the Islamic faith among the Jews and the Orthodox Jews. There's also the Shema, which this is based on that same foundation, but in the pure language of the King of Kings and his Christ. So what about Jah's law? This is the beginning of, of being a son or a daughter, a son of the daughter, uh, in-law of Jah. What was the Moshiach's attitude? And what is the Moshiach's attitude? What is Christos, is Christ's attitude toward Jah's law? We find in Psalm 40 and 8, it says, I delight to do thy will. O Elohe, O my God, yea, thy law is within my heart. We have to write his law, his word, his teaching within our heart. Now, how do you write something from your heart? This is speaking of applying it to our, to our memory. You understand? Learning it by heart. You understand? Learning this by heart. And this is one of the real keys that in this um, modern world where um, forgetfulness has become as a way of life. This is why there's so much hypocrisy because the, the, the lack of utilizing the power of memory to remember that which is good and that which is true. In other words, people can remember the negatives and, and evil and wrong, but don't remember the truth, don't know the truth. But David, in this particular psalm, Psalm 40, was a man after Jah's own heart. And here we find the Messiah's, even the black Messiah's attitude towards Jah's law. I delight to do thy will. Make thy will obedient to good influences. Kedamawi Haile Selassie teaches I and I to make our wills obedient. Christ also teaches us in the Our Father prayer. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And who are the doers? Not just the forgetful hearers. Hear, O Israel, it is for I and I to be the, the doers. But first we have to learn what well, first we have to learn. First we have, and this is, this, is, this is the beginning right here, this particular Deuteronomy chapter uh, 6, verse 4. Now, Yeshua, Joshua, how did he address Jah's law in, in, in the famous uh, sermon or what's known as the Sermon on the Mount in Matthew's chapter 5, verses 17 and 18. It's written, Think not that I am come to destroy the law. Yeshua did not come to destroy the law, the Torah, or the Nebiah, or the prophets. I am come not to destroy, but to fulfill. For verily I say to you, Till heaven and earth pass, one jot or one tittle shall in no wise pass from the law, from Torah, till all be fulfilled. And as you should know, we are in a time of the fulfilling of all, even in a time where many um suspect and there's even evidence that it's as though heaven and earth is passing away therefore the firmness and the anchorage for i and i in this world and the time of great tribulation is jah's word yova saying is jah's word so how did jah make his Lord known. In Exodus chapter 31, verse 18, he gave command, he gave to Moses when he had made an end of communing with him upon Mount Sinai, Sinai, two tables of testimony. This is the, the, the two truths. You understand? We link it from Ma'at and the feather, and, and we'll touch on that detail. But these two tables the zilat of testimony, tables of stone, hieroglyphic writing, writing in stone, written with the finger or the digitalis, the digitalis or the digital, the finger of Jah. Now, 
there's some facts that also connect with the law, and we're going to get into more on this particular teaching about Jah's about Jah's law, about Jah's law. But let's touch on Matthew 22, verse 20, verse 37 to verse 40, where Yeshua said, Thou shalt love when he's asked now, when he is asked about the great commandment. What did Yeshua say? He said, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God, Yahweh thy Eloh, Elohe, with all thy heart and with all thy soul and with all thy mind. And what does Yeshua say? Yeshua says, This is the first and the great commandment. So this is from from Deuteronomy or Rit Zedagim, chapter six, verse four. This is what Jesus Christos was referring when he was asked concerning the first and the great commandment. And here we have it right here. Hear, O Israel, Yahweh, the Lord, our Elohe, our Eloh, our God is Yahweh, he who is who he is, Ahad. Ahad means one, the one, or the, the one who is the one who is united, has the idea of the Trinity as one, the triune, the God, the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, the the first power of the Trinity. Bamarinya we have it as Israel Hoy Sima Amlakachin Egazi Abher and Egazi Abherno. Here, O Israel, Israel Hoy, Simma, Simma, Amlaka Chin, our source, our Eloh, Elohim in them heart, Amlaka Chin, Igzi Abher, Yahweh, Yahweh's primordial name is Igzi Abher. And we're going to touch on the triune God's name in the Ethiopic. But Enough said is Rael Hoy Sama Amlakachin Egaziabihir and Egaziabiherno. Verse five And thou shalt love the Lord Yahweh in the Hebrew Egaziabihir Bamarinya thy God Eloh in the Hebrew Amlak Bamarinya with all thine heart and with all thy soul, and with all thy might. Bamarinya, antem amlakehin egzi abherin befitzum libih, befitzumim nefsih, befitzumim hailih, wood dead, wood dead, to love. This is a command right here, wood dead. Wood dead, wood dead, wood dead, de, wo, wood dead, wood dead, wood dead, love. So we have two commands in here. We have one, a command to hear, and then we have the next command to love. So one command is to hear, and this hearing is deep because the hearing links with the feeling, and similar to he who feels it, knows it. And then we have love. And the love is linking the, this tr tripartite nature in man, his heart, his soul, and his might. Bamarinya, we have libih, your male heart. We have nefsih, nefs, the soul. And we have hail, or hail, the hail. Your power. Now, the etymology behind Chayil, or like, as in Chayla, Chayla Selassie, or Chayil, right here, links directly with the Hebraic El, El, as we have in Elohe, Elohim, and in Israel, which means the power, the strength, and interpretively, the God. So this is the Shema. This right here is the Shema. This is our word of witness. Hear, O Israel. Israel, hoy, simma, 
amlakachin egazi abher and egazi abherno Israel hoy simma here o Israel amlak achin amlak kachin egazi abher and egazi abher no antem amlakahin egazi abherin be fitsum libe be fitsumim nafsih be fitsumim khayli wudad Give thanks, my brothers and sisters, more to come. And the Barbate, the house of reading, learning our fidels. Now, our particular um, transliteration here, you understand, this is just like, a, this is a test right here of a transliteration, um, trying to use the English as, 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 as uh, technically and accurately correct to express the Ethiopic you understand, to express the pure, our pure language. You understand, where he says he would turn to us a pure language, and this is our pure language. So we are comparing right here the English you know, with the Amharic, and this is the transli transliteration concerning, concerning the Shema. Now, Yeshua, he kept this, and therefore it is for I and I to also keep this, because he says, and the second is like to it, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. And he says that on these two, on these two, love of God, love of Jah, if you please, and love of Jah neighbor, love of thy neighbor, he says, on these two commandments hang or are suspended or are crucified by interpretation. On these two commandments hang all the law, hang all of Torah. When he says the law from a Hebraic perspective, law would be Torah and the prophets and the Nabiyat, and the Nabiyat. Now, some would theorize that the Ten Commandments, or more properly the, the Ten Words, the Commandment, are the Father's, while they would say that Christ, that the Yeshua, his commandments are only two. Some would theorize based on a faulty trance, um, um, uh, interpretation in a sense uh, or interpolation of what's written in Matthew 22 verses 37 to 40 verse 40 but um, that's totally unrelated in that sense to the Ten Commandments of the Old Testament the careful study of the Ten Commandments however reveal that when we look at the Ten Words right known as the Ten Commandments the first four deal with our love towards God, our love towards Jah, our responsibility to God the Father, while the last six deal with our relationship with our neighbor, or by extension and interpretation in, 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 in Christ, our neighbor, our bread companion, the one who we share communion with, the one who seeks to do the will of our Father, therefore in spirit and in truth, our brother. But this is why Yeshua said, on these two commandments hang, hang all the law, the Father's commandments and what Christ gives as the great and the second, like unto the great commandment, are not two separate laws. They are one and the same. They are achad, achadu amlak. If ye keep my commandment, ye shall abide in my love, even as I have kept my Father's commandment and abide in his love. 
John chapter 15, verse 10. Whosoever, therefore, shall break one of these least commandments and shall teach men so, he shall be called the least in the kingdom of heaven. But whosoever shall do and teach them, the same shall be called great in the kingdom of heaven, according to Matthew chapter 5, verse 19. If thou wilt enter into life, keep the commandment. Matthew 19 and 17. Now, it's interesting because Hawaria Paulos, Paul, he wrote in his epistles this. In Romans chapter 13, verses 8 to 10, he says, Owe no man anything but to love one another. For he that loveth another hath fulfilled the commandment. Now, what do we um, point out right here about this? Let's... Um, let's uh, bring this out a little bit so we can get this more into perspective right here. What do we point out right here? We point out right here that there are two main commands here. You'll see there's the simma or the simma to hear and there's the wood dead, the wood dead, which is to love. Now hear what Hawaria Paulos or Paul um, writes and teaches on this. He says, Oh, no man anything or be not in no words debt in the words, but to love one another, for he that loveth another hath fulfilled the law. He who would dead, right, he who loves, or some would say wadada, in other words, in a kind of a kindergarten ras to speak, you understand? He who loves does what? He who loves fulfills. You understand? He who loves is fulfilling the law, or Torah, the Orit, for this, thou shalt not commit adultery, thou shalt not kill or murder, thou shalt not steal, thou shalt not be a false witness, thou shalt not covet, that means wanting to have what belongs rightfully to someone else, and if there by any other commandment, it is briefly comprehended, is briefly understood or overstood in this saying, namely, thou shalt love thy neighbor, thy bread com companion, bale injera, in the royal, the royal language of the king of kings, in the pure language, a neighbor is a bale injera, injera is the bread, bale means one who has or one who shares bread. In other words, one who is in communion, in other words, with you, your neighbor as thyself. Because in O Beta Israel, your neighbor, to say your neighbor, that is to say your 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 brother and your sister in the covenant community. Not saying your brother or your sister um, f fleshy, according to the flesh, but the brother or sister in the Al Kidan or the covenant community is what neighbor implies not just the person who just lives next to you so so to speak as in the in the west that's a disorientated sense but if we orientate ourselves in other words look to the east and to ethiopia we see that a neighbor is a bala injera bala injera one who shares has bread one who is in communion with you thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself love worketh no ill to his balenjera, balenjera, his, his bread companion. Therefore, love is the fulfilling, the fulfilling of the law. Love is the fulfilling of Torah. And we can see that very clearly, even and especially, we see that very clearly, even and especially here in Deuteronomy, or read Zedagim, chapter 6, verse 4 and verse 5. And thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thine heart and with all thy soul and with all thy might. 
This is where the power comes from, the true divine power to love your neighbor, because first it is based on the love of God. You understand? So when we love our neighbor <laughs> or we love our, our brother, you understand? It is not because of their so-called virtue or value. It is because of Jah's word. It is because of keeping covenant and faith with being faithful to Jah. You see, everybody nowadays want people to be faithful to them. You hear everybody talking about this one cheated, that one cheated, not being faithful. But they all are cheating on their love to Jah. Now, the conclusion of this, Ecclesiastes 12 and, and, and 13, Ecclesiastes 12 and 13 says this right here. Let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Let us hear the conclusion of all of this. Fear or reverence Jah, fear God and keep his, what, commandments. For this is the whole duty of man. This is the whole duty. This is our whole duty, to fear or reverence Jah and to keep his commandments. This is our whole duty. New Testament summation of this, James chapter 2, verses uh, uh, 10 to um, verse 12, for whosoever shall keep, whosoever shall keep the whole law, or whosoever shall keep the whole Torah, and yet offend in one point, he is guilty of all. Now, this is where we say that the, that the so-called Ten Commandments, saying the Ten Commandments is, 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 a, is a Gentile uh, misunderstanding, um, that it's not Ten Commandments, but it's one command, and it's ten words. That's why it's called the Decalogue. This is why James in James chapter 2, Yaakov chapter 2, verses 10 to 12, would write this, for whosoever shall keep the whole law, or Torah, and yet offend in one point, in one uh, nit, uh, he is guilty of all. You see, so you look at the Ten Commandments, right? Ten Commandments are not ten commands, but it's one command, but it's ten points. So if one offends in one particular point of the ten words, which is one command, one is guilty of offending the commandment, because the commandment is achad. For he that said, do not commit adultery, notice this is why Yaakob or James, in making this um, example here, and we've heard a lot of Christians, nominal Christians and others talk about this and preach on it, but it's like they don't have no, no knowledge of what they're saying. You understand? Because they, they don't understand this main point right here that when James says, for whosoever shall keep the whole law and yet offend in one point, he is guilty of all. It's because the so-called Ten Commands is one command. This is why the next thing that Yaakob or James, the brother of Adoni or the brother of the Lord of Gittah would say, for he that said, do not commit adultery, also said, do not murder, or in your translations, do not kill. Now, if thou commit no adultery, yet if thou murder or kill, thou art become a what? A transgressor of the law. So we can clearly see that what Yaiko is, is speaking on here in the New Testament, the Hadith Kidan, as being um, the law and a transgressor of the law is what y'all call and people call the Ten Commandments, which more properly is the Ten Words of the One Commandment or of the Commandment. So the transgressor of the law would be a transgressor of His Commandment. So speak ye. In other words, so speak y'all and so do. So when we say, hear, O Israel, and we speak this, so we must do it as well. So speak ye, and so do, as they that shall be judged, as we who shall be judged by the law, it says of liberty, but when you 
go to the root of this, it says by the royal law, you understand, by the king's law. The law of liberty is the king's law, even the law of our Godfather, the King of Kings, and his Christ. Shalom Aras Tafari. Learn the Rastafari Shema, the Simma, in the royal language of the King of Kings, I and I, pure language of Aras Tafari. Shalom.